Hey guys, welcome back to Game Leap LoL Challenger Guides. I'm LoL Midorima and today we will be doing a patch 14.3 rundown. There's a lot to unpack in patch 14.3, so in today's video, I will only be going over the champion changes. So if you're interested in the item changes for patch 14.3, stay tuned and look out for our next video. Reason we're doing this in two segments is, again, when you first look at this, this patch almost looks like a mid-season patch. There's a lot of changes. So bear with us. Before we begin, make sure to check out GameLeap.com for hundreds of pro League of Legends challenger guides made by challenger coaches, such as myself. We've got macro guides, courses for all the meta champions, and more. Click the link in the description box below to get your free LP now. So the first champion that's going to be getting buffed is Nidalee. Basic MR growth is going to go from 1.3 to 1.45. E minimum base heal is going to go from 35.95 to 50.150. E minimum AP ratio is going from 27.5% to 35%. E attack speed buff is going from 20% 60% to 30% 70%. This is actually a pretty big buff. Nidalee has typically always been that champion that is piloted by either one trick ponies who love that champion, players who love the feast or famine lifestyle, and that's simply because she is so centered around landing that Q and being very efficient with her pathing and clear to become this really mechanical champion. Now with the E-Boss, she's gonna be less of that in a sense, where it's more open to newer players that wanna get into Nidalee because rather than being fully reliant on your Q, you can now play a little bit more of a supportive style with your E, which is super buffed, with 27.5% to 35%, and the attack speed going an extra 10%. So, not bad. Pike is going to be next on the list of getting buffed. Base armor, 45 to 47. Q mana cost, 74.90 to 70.90. Q AD ratio, 60% to 75%. W movement speed, 40% plus 1.5% per lethality to 45% plus 2% per lethality. E base damage 105 to 265 to 100 to 300. This is actually going to make Dave Bond super, super happy. I think that in terms of for support pike, these changes don't really make all that much of a difference. It does help. Don't get me wrong. The base armor and the QAD ratio definitely does help. But for mid pike, that W movement speed from the lethality change is going to help so much alongside that QAD ratio where you're going to have a lot more raw AD early because you're getting more gold to make that stab hurt a little bit harder. So Pike mid may make its return very soon. Up next, we have Shivana. Q attack speed 40% to 60%, 50% to 70%. That is pretty good. Q first hit AP ratio 35% to 50%. W speed AP ratio 8% per 100 AP to 12% per 100 AP. I think Riot is trying to bring back AP Shivana, and if you're like me and other players, we're not really looking forward to that, but if you're an AP Shivana enjoyer, then you'll really like these buffs. Shivana has fallen out of the meta simply because she was a one-trick pony with completely relying on her E. Now that they're giving a little bit of love to her Q and her W, this actually might bring a little bit of flair back into Shivana, as a lot of the meta right now is junglers just bulk clearing and being ready for objectives. Shivana being one of the fastest clearers in the game, she can maybe hit level six on the second objective, whether that be second grubs or second drag, and that would actually help out a lot in her fighting potential. Up next, Talia. Q base damage damage per stone 5130 to 60132 minuscule buff e cooldown 18 seconds to 14 seconds is now 14 seconds flat not really much of a change here just a little bit of quality of life for talia i guess wukong q bonus range 75 to 175 135 to 175 he almost doubles his q range which is a little bit insane in my opinion the q damage ad ratio is going from 45 to 55 e cooldown 10 seconds 8 seconds 10 to 10 seconds 7 seconds that's not really that big of a buff but let's talk about that 75 bonus range that he has on that queue that is going to be a bit annoying for when you play top lane wukong wukong hasn't been played top lane for a while now once that jungle change came through for it e, we've mainly been seeing wukong jungle there and since that has fallen out of the meta i guess Riot is trying to implement wukong back into the meta by putting him back home in the top lane and so that q buff is really going to help a lot zeri base ad 53 56 r cooldown 100 second 100 85 70 to 80 75 70. Shredding off a total of 20 seconds from the initial R cooldown is definitely going to help a lot. 
Zeri has fallen out of the meta for a really long time, really weak when it came to item changes, really weak when she got nerfed over and over again. Giving her that 3 AD back early game is going to help her a lot with getting that early shove and having the arc will be a lot lower means that she can contest more objectives because then she can fight in lane with her R rather than having to forcefully hold it for either a fight or an objective. Ziggs, I'm going to feel dirty about reading this buff. Armor, 18 plus 4.5 to 21 plus 4.7. Ziggs bot lane has been very, very strong for quite a while now, and increasing his armor is a bit criminal to do, but it's very, very nice if you play Ziggs or Mage's bot lane. W cooldown, 24 seconds to 12 seconds, 20 seconds to 12 seconds. Shaving up a full four seconds off his W, which is his only form of escape, is also a bit nuts. So now Ziggs bot lane went from Z tier bot laner to Z tier bot laner. He has bonus armor now, so he can play against the AD carries a lot easier, and he can now be safer because his W is going to be off cooldown sooner. That's kind of crazy. Okay, let's get into champion nerfs. Azir, base health regen, seven to five. Not much to take home about, but we're getting in the right direction here. Brand, passive monster damage. 220% to 200%. It's still capped at 80. Q base damage 8200 to 7190. Brand Jungle has been running rampant in solo queue. It has a super fast clear time whether he starts with a leash or not. But and so what this nerf is going to do is it's going to take down his clear time in my opinion, probably with by around maybe 10 to 15 seconds, which is very very good. It's to allow a bit more counterplay to Brand outside of once he gets level 3 in the jungle. Ezreal, Q AD ratio 135% to 130, R base damage, 300, 350 damage, 700 to 325, 625. R bonus AD ratio, 120% to 100%. Ezreal has been getting buffed, buffed, buffed after the new seasons that started. He was not very good with the items and suddenly we make a new build for Ezreal to go back again with the Essence Reaver. We buffed him last patch in patch 14.2. We buffed Karma, his best friend lane opponent in 14.2. And so along with the items that we will be talking about in the next video of Essence Reaver and Devori, those two items are also getting buffed again. And so Ezreal needs some form of nerf to tie him back down onto earth before he skyrockets from a random D tier champion all the way up to S tier. So the QAD ratio is is not going to be super noticeable, but the 5% does help. And as for the R, no one really used Ezreal R as a stat move, in my opinion. At least I don't. And so that's going to be a little bit a little bit of a placebo nerf. Moving on to Karma. RQ explosion damage, 35, 140, 245, 350 plus 70% AP is now changing to 40, 130, 220, 310 plus 50% AP. AP Karma has been going crazy again. Same as Ezra with the patch 14.2 buffs. Her build of going AP outshines her build of going Enchanter. This nerfing her by 20% bonus AP is indeed going to be noticeable and it's going to hurt, but I still think that the Malignant's AP choice support item on Karma is still going to reign supreme. Thilia, passive AP damage AP ratio, 1.5% max HP per 100 AP to 1.25% max HP per 100 AP. Taking it down by 0.25, eh, slight difference, we're moving in the right direction, but we need a little bit more work on that. QAP ratio reduced down from 45% to 35%. That is going to hurt a lot. That is going to take down Lilia's early clear by a decent chunk, oh, and it's also gonna nerf her scaling, but I still think she's gonna be just fine with the items that she has with the Horizon Focus, be the cosmic drive i mean having the leandries again she's still super super strong these nerfs do impact her in the later game scaling but it is needed based on how rampant lilia can take over a game rengar base health 620 to 590 qad ratio 100% 120% goes down to 100%, 115%. Empowered QAD ratio, 140% to 130%. Rangar also been a super S plus jungler, jungler almost Z tier with the hubris and lethalities being super good for assassins, 80 assassins everywhere. Rangar being super dominant in the jungle. And so these nerfs are needed. Rangar has been in the best state he has ever been in the past couple of years. And so he really needs this nerf. Trundle, base health, 686 to 650. Q base damage 20 100 to 10 90. Trundle top very very strong the lethal tempo stat check stick from level one and the split push machine anything onwards has been really painful to deal with for all top laners and all players if you're not a trundle player around the globe and so this nerf is going to nerf his early game a little bit is to help him 
not completely just one side stop level ones. I think the issue is mainly going to rely on the fact that Trundle can very easily proc the lethal tempo with just auto Q auto and stacking it up really fast alongside the fact that he can steal AD. So while this nerf is going to be a slight little tickle, it is moving in the right direction. Now we're going on to champion adjustments. Aurelian Soul, Q mana cost per second, 45 plus five per rank to 30 plus five per rank. Q stacks per champion burst, one to three. W mana cost, 80 plus five per rank to 50 plus five per rank. W cooldown, 22 minus 1.5 per rank. It moves to 15 minus one per rank. W percent Q damage during W, 14.14% 14 .14 plus 1.5 per rank to 18% plus 2% per rank. Stacks per unit that dies within Aurelian Souls E. Champions goes from 5 to 2. Epic Monsters goes from 5 to 2. Cannon Minions goes from 3 to 2. And Large Monsters go from 3 to 2. This is changing Aurelian Souls playstyle from a very not interactive just E champion, I believe, into he's now going to be moving towards a more roaming type playstyle like Aurelian Soul used to, where he's going to be using his W a lot for trading, using it for roaming. And his Q is now going to be a a better way to stack it stack your ability your stars rather than just farming last hitting with your e e is definitely still going to help as you still get the one per every minion you kill that's normal but you're mainly going to be wanting to stack your passive off your q on champions now and using these big w buffs udir udir passive now benefits from ultimate effects like ultimate haste this is going to be a little bit insane because udir top has been very very strong especially with the phoenix stance and so a Allowing him to actually get his passive from ultimate effects like ultimate haste means he's going to have that phoenix tornado up way more often now. That is going to be a dangerous, dangerous buff. York, goal leash range, 2000 to 1600. Q mana cost, 25 to 20. Q heal is no longer doubled when below 50% health. Q now heals an additional 4 to 8% missing health. Q healing is now reduced by 50% against non-champions. E cast time, 0.33 seconds to 0.25 seconds. E now visually arcs higher. R mark proc cooldown removed. R mark damage, 3% to 9%. HP is now 2% to 3% max HP. Our mark monster damage cap went from 200 from 400 into just 100 flat. I think that Yorick is actually being changed to be more of a fighter with his Q rather than having to completely stay back and permanently rely on his ghouls. There was a playstyle of Lethality Yorick where it would always just be you stack up four ghouls with your Q and then you throw your E and lethality ghouls would deal a ton of damage. I think they're trying to move away from that play style and they're moving towards the split push York again, but I'm not a big York player. So who knows? We'll see where this goes. Corky. W AP ratio 40% to 60%, W cooldown 20 seconds, 16 seconds to 20 seconds, 12 seconds, W mana cost 100 to 80, package duration 60 seconds to 45 seconds. Corky does not need this W buff. I'm going to be completely real with you guys. I'm not really sure what's cooking in the kitchen at Riot Games but Corky does not need that W buff. Their way of nerfing Corky to balance that out is by making his package duration 15 seconds less, but in reality, Corky doesn't really hold onto his package the full 60 seconds. This is going to help for when Corky is threatening the package during objective fights, but usually that just means the, the enemy team has to make up their mind quicker when they are piloting that Corky. Alawi, tentacles gain 125 bonus range, tentacle base damage 1080 to 9162, tentacle AD ratio 120% to 115%. So because of the map change in season 14, we noticed that Alawi has been a lot weaker because it's harder to get fights off with good tentacles outside of fighting them with your ultimate. So to counteract that, Riot is now giving a bonus 125 range to the tentacles, which is definitely going to help a lot in order to make sure that doesn't get out of hand. They are nerfing the damage just to make sure that she is still countered in a way and making it balanced. Maokai, base mana regen 7.2 to 6, passive base heal removed. Passive heal 4 to 12% max HP is now 4% to 12.8% max HP. Q cooldown, eight seconds to five seconds to seven seconds to five seconds. Q mana cost, 60 to 40. E cooldown, 14 seconds flat to 16 seconds to 12 seconds. E mana cost, 45.85 to 60.80. R cooldown, 120 to 100 to 130.90. 
This is gonna change Maokai from being a super, 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 super strong objective champion of the jungle, always being able to threaten with a R cooldown that's really, really short. It's definitely gonna be strong late still, but in the early game, it used to be super, super oppressive with you having it up once every two minutes. That was honestly a really big issue as you could always choose to get at least two fights, two ganks off with your ulti before you had to worry about saving it for the dragon fight or the baron fight or the grub fight. I think these are a lot of mini chains that are definitely going to help with i think top lane maokai i'm gonna gonna be honest having the q cooldown faster allows you to trade easier having lower mana cost is gonna like again allow you to trade easier in top lane and the passive heal is well you aren't really trading much in the jungle right you're more or less trading in top lane so i think this is riot's way of making maokai easier to pilot into the top lane role again zyra mana regen 13 plus 0.4% is now changed to 7.8, 7% plus 0.8. Q mana cost is 70 down to 55. W small cooldown refund is 20% to 35. Now I want you to talk about here, Zyra is just giving some slight tweaks here and there. That's all there is. Chaco, mana growth 0.45 to 0.35. W mana cost 70 flat to 70 goes down to 1 to 50 now. W bonus monster damage starts at was 10 to 50 is now 20 to 80. E mana cost 60 65 to 75. I think that Assassin AD Shaco has been very strong with the new items. And so being that it outshined a lot of AP Shaco's strengths. And so in my opinion, with these buffs, they're very small, but I do think they help AP Shaco come back into the meta as well, giving Shaco another play style. So that is all for this champion rundown. Again, this was a pretty long video for just champions. So like I said, stay tuned for the next video, which is going to include the patch 14.3 items. Again, thanks for watching guys.